Welcome to What the World is Watching. Here's your host, John and Doska. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. We are just two short days away from the 2015 Royal Rumble. This is the most exciting time by far in the entire year for WWE fans, for the WWE Universe, I should say. Uh, joining me today is my good friend, Quaylen. Uh, who was here a couple weeks ago with us? How you doing today, Quaylen? I'm doing well. How you doing, John? I, I'm good. I got the I got the Rumble fever going on. What about you? Oh yeah, I've been had it for uh, pretty much all month. I've had Rumble fever. Been catching up on uh, past Rumbles that I haven't watched on the on the network, and yeah, I'm ready for it. I'm excited. Well, that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk all things uh, about the Royal Rumble because. Um, as I said, it is the most exciting time for us as fans because, you know, this is what generally starts the road to WrestleMania, as they say. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but it is the most exciting hour that there is in, in the entire year. Oh, yeah. I, well, hopefully it's an hour this year because I my the things I hate the most is when they made it like a half hour. It's like only a minute in between yeah. entrances. Yeah. That sucks. So hopefully it is... Um, you know, the full deal, the full two minutes between. But we're not going to talk that much. We'll talk a little bit about it, but um, not too much. We're not going to touch too much on this year's Royal Rumble. What we're going to focus on here, as we do on the show all the time, is, uh, you know, what uh, you know what you can find in the network to sort of gear up. So whatever your plans are for, you know, the weekend, cancel them, stay home, <laughs> and make sure you catch up on... All, all the different, you know, uh, great things for the Rumble you could see. Again, all the pay-per-views, uh, as, as they all are, available on the WWE Network, which is uh, $9.99. If you, haven't, if you haven't signed up for it yet, um, what I want to encourage everybody to do is if you go to 999nation.com, if, if you could, if you think to do this, go to 999nation.com, and what will happen is if you click on the link that's in there, um, the WWE will actually, and you sign up by clicking our link, they'll actually kick us back a couple bucks for you signing up through us. So, um, so if, if you could do that, that'd be great. Also, you know, click on our link if you're going to buy any rumble gear or, um, you know, any, anything like that, uh, you know, do so. There's a, we have a special code on our website for, uh, anybody that wanting to go to the WWE shop or the shop zone as it used to be known. So <laughs> I'm wearing right now my, I just got a official, new, uh, new, new, new world order, new world order, uh, hoodie that, uh, <laughs> Xbox was wearing, um, on, or six Pac if he was, I guess six when he was. Yeah. Uh, and then we took <laughs> off the hoodie. He was then Xbox suddenly, yeah. uh, but, uh, he was wearing this. So I, I, you know, uh, you know, I encourage everybody to get their, get their gear. If you could again, 999nation.com. But anyway, enough about that. We're going to talk about the Royal rumble and Quaylen, you went through, and like you said, there was some that you'd missed for anybody just to bring up to speed on Quaylen. Like I said, he was here a couple uh, weeks ago, but you're somebody who was a casual, was a casual fan kind of, yep. had kind of watched here and there throughout the years, but now you've kind of rediscovered wrestling. You've signed up for the network and you're now watching all, a lot of the stuff that you missed. Yeah. I, I got out of it. Um, stopped watching faithfully probably like in high school so around 2000 2001 is probably like around my uh last years where i was starting to fade out so i stopped um i didn't watch any rumbles from about 2002 to about 2012 or 13 when uh you started having rumble parties at your apartment yeah. i would come over and you know i started realizing how much I liked them again. I would come over and watch the last few uh, at your place. And so, yeah, I went back and um, watched a few that I never watched before. And yeah, I, I missed out on some great ones. And there are some ones that I'm glad I missed out on. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's also probably some too, that you might've missed uh, in the, in the earlier years too. Oh yeah. Yeah. The earlier years, just cause I mean, I, I'm sure I watched them with my father, but I can't, I couldn't remember them, but right. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's some that, yeah, I missed out in the earlier years. I went back and watched are also really good too. Now, one of the things that we're going to do on the website, which you'll see, uh, it should be up by the time this is out is, uh, you could go to, again, the website, 999nation.com. I'm going to keep, I'm going to mention it more than they mentioned the 999 <laughs> on, on raw. Uh, it's going to keep happening here, but, um, we're going to have what's what I like to call just our, our network playlist. Um, you know, you could share like a Spotify 
playlist or whatever on Facebook. What we're going to do is we're going to put up, you know, links, a uh, little playlist of like what Quaylen will have. He's going to take uh, his favorite Rumble matches. Mm-hmm. So this is kind of a, you know, good way, you know, if you trust our opinion or maybe don't know where to start, <laughs> you know, Quaylen is going to guide you through his favorite Rumble matches of all time. And then I'm going to take you through some of the other matches that happen at the Royal Rumble, different singles matches, title matches, and, and things like that. But before we get into that, let's let's really start from the beginning. Uh, because, as I said, the Royal Rumble is is by by far my favorite event. I know it's yours, and yes, a lot of people share that sentiment is. with us. I think one of the um, one of the first things that uh, I know I, I I watched on the network actually as soon as I signed up about a year ago now, or almost a year, uh, was the 1988 Royal Rumble because that was something that wasn't on pay per view. Mm-hmm. It was actually a special, a TV special on the USA Network. And, um, the, uh, WWE put this on to, uh, you know, as, as they did, I mean, everybody talks about the Monday night war, but at this time, uh, the, uh, you know, WWE and Jim Crockett promotions were also having a war of their own and it was <laughs> happening with pay-per-view. So at this time, um, Starcade 87 and Survivor Series 87 were on the same day. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were, they were, they were, I mean, they were, you know, clashing with each other. And then, um, the, uh, the, the Royal Rumble, you know, they, they would do sort of like different, uh, things like, so like, let's say for instance, you know, uh, this is a good example, WrestleMania four, let's say there's, um, you know, while WrestleMania four was happening on pay-per-view WCW decides, or well, Jim Crockett promotions at the time, this is right before it became WCW. They decide to put on the first clash of champions. Oh, Same time. Okay. So, like, this was happening back then, and again, this, like, having these big kind of events on network TV, um, you know, that this as they did with the Royal Rumble was, you know, their, you know, part of that whole thing that they had going on. And, um, you know, this first Royal Rumble, 20 men instead of 30. Mm-hmm. But still the same concept, still the same, you know, idea. And, uh, you know, an interesting winner, uh, I guess to say, to say the least, but Hacksaw Jim Duggan. Oh, don't mean to, you know, spoil it for anybody, but you know, it's, that's, that's one thing that's, I think just for historical purposes, everybody should really start there to just to see kind of where it, you know, like just kind of see it in its infancy. That's yeah, a great place yeah. to start. And I mean, I watched that one too. And I mean, it was, it was great because you saw like all the legends in one ring, you know, and really, if, if I do remember, there really wasn't anything on the line. At that point, it was just basically for bragging rights, right? Right, the correct. Yes. It was just bragging rights. Right. They, they won the first Rumble. I mean, and, and it was fun because anyone could win it. And that, that's the thing about the time, you know, you could think, you know, when Coco Beware comes out, maybe he could win, actually. Yeah. You don't know. Then the next year when you have people like, uh, you know, Big John Studd when he wins the next year or... Um, you know, uh, you know, then Hogan had his little deal. But before that, you know, it, it, I mean, you know, it could be anybody because there wasn't on the line. That's one of the things I think that was lost once they got the title and the picture and the main event at WrestleMania, right, which right. is great. You know, don't get me wrong, but like, you know, you just know that, you know, this, this weekend, if he's in it, you know, Zack Ryder or Heath Slater or whatever, they're not going to win the Rumble. Right. Or maybe the Usos or something like right. that. Well, that, you know, uh, so that, that's, that's the, that's the problem with it. And it sort of takes away from, cause you kind of, you're able to sort of predict things a little more, Yeah, you know, but still sticking with, you know, those earlier years, um, you know, what, um, you know, my, my, my favorite one and I, uh, of all time, just to go with this is Royal Rumble '92 with mm-hmm. Ric Flair. Ric Flair, yeah. Tell me what your thoughts are on that, and I'll I'll get to mine because like that was that was a, one of the ones that just um I, I I love I can watch it over and over again. To me, the commentary with Bobby Heenan and Gorilla is just completely amazing. So yeah, what do, what do you think about that? I think I like that one the most because. Just like I said previously, I like to watch and see all the stars in one ring. And that one was kind of like at that point where you start seeing like the younger stars, like um, uh, Shawn Michaels was in that one. Undertaker was in that one, you know, in their their, uh, 
when they're just starting, but you also have people like Hogan and Flair, like the legends that's been there. And it's like, you see the clash of generations coming together, like future greatness and, and greatness at that time. I want to say past greatness because they were still in their prime at that time, you know? And it's just like amazing to see that mixture of greatness all in one ring, you know, battling against each other and just to see, you know, the outcome of their careers. And I'm pretty sure many people didn't see that the people who were in it, their career is going to take off the way that it did. But seeing like now the outcome of their careers and just looking back on it, like, wow, it, all of them were there right, right then and there, you know? Well, Flair even mentioned on Raw this past week. You yeah. Know, everybody yeah. that was in it, Piper, Savage, Undertaker, yeah. everybody that you mentioned too. So that's a really good point to bring that up. And it, it, I think the element of it too, that I, that I really like is, um, you know, not only because it's flair and because of the performance that he put in, but one of the elements that I love about the Royal Rumble match is having the like to me it's not a Royal Rumble match unless there's a guy that's been in there for like a really long time. Yeah. yeah. You know, I always love that when there's somebody that's been in there and they keep saying, Oh, they've been in for thirty minutes or like forty five minutes or or whatever. Um, you know, my my um that's one of the things that I love about that one because, you know, they, they kept saying how impossible it was going to be for Flair to last until the end, and he did. Right. Lasting over an hour. And, like, you know, even before then, like, uh, you know, we should backtrack. We didn't really cover these. Two, we kind of glossed over these earlier years. But, like, you know, um, the the years before, like, we covered 89 a little bit. But, like, 90 and 91, the years that Hogan won, mm-hmm. um, the, you know, there was two of those, like, which I love – you know, Million Dollar Man in 1990 stayed in for like 40 something minutes. And then the year after, Rick Martel, which Rick Martel, I always go on record as saying, um, you know, there's there's people who you think are like, you know, the best wrestlers. Who do you think is the best wrestler? But for me, Rick Martel isn't the best wrestler, obviously, but he's always been <laughs> one of my favorites. Right. I don't know why, but like, you know, I love that he stayed in there for over 50 something minutes. And just like it, you know, it just it just adds like to the drama of it, mm-hmm. you know, and it kind of like show like how, um, you know, it it, it kind of adds to that like adversity aspect of it because you know they're they're in there and then they're up against somebody who's really fresh. Um, we, we just watched, I think, one of our favorite moments, uh, from the Royal Rumble 1990, with yes. with Ultimate Warrior. Tell tell us. Tell us about that. Well, uh, when Ultimate Warrior got <laughs> eliminated, and it was like, you know how people, they get eliminated, and they, they sit there and debate it a little bit, like, oh, no, he eliminated me. Or no, look at, yeah, yeah. Ultimate Warrior got eliminated and just took took off to the, to the back, and it was hilarious. He just ran, he just bolts to the back. And Ultimate Warrior, like, I will go on record and say Ultimate Warrior is in my top five favorite wrestlers of all time. Mm-hmm. I don't care what anyone says. Yeah. But just to, he just, he, got eliminated it's like what are you thinking like he just got eliminated just took off like he was embarrassed or like like he had to take a shit or something and he just really had to <laughs> had to get out of there he just took off it was it was hilarious well and that was the like you know the next year um the, the well we should we should we just watched we should mention we just watched Santino's deal on the network which, yeah which it, it was kind of I gotta say it was a little disappointing because I thought it was going to be, um, you know, you and I were talking a couple of weeks ago, we were just talking and, and mentioned like, oh, it'd be cool if they did like a thing where they, like on the network where they had guys coming out and picking their numbers or whatever. So yeah. it was like Santino's lottery thing. We thought, oh, like, like Santino's hosting it and they're going to have some people come on and pick their numbers. Cause they used to do that in the pay-per-views like a long mm-hmm. time ago and you'd see that happen. So, uh, we thought that was going to happen, but it was basically just a clip show of like the best Royal Rumble rumble moments. And, and it was cool, you know, and they, they, um, you know, they showed a lot of great moments. One being the ultimate warrior thing that you just mentioned. <laughs> um, right. But another thing was, is the, uh, the uh, the betrayals and different things like that and one that they didn't mention was something that never it like nothing came of it <laughs> uh, but i kept mentioning it before too we're watching it but tugboat and hulk hogan kind of going at it in 91 that was just one of those weird things that like nothing came of it they were friends and then tugboat was an asshole in the rumble and 
Like, I don't know. It was just a very odd thing. But my, my, my other favorite moment from that is definitely the bushwhacker. Oh yeah. Um, the bushwhacker moment. So that's, you it's know, like he didn't even miss a beat. He just, he just came whacked down, in and whacked out. Yep. Whacked in, whacked out and just went out the same way doing his little strut, you know? Yeah. And that was the last year's, you know, it's, it's interesting too. I guess we were just talking about how the rumble, anybody could have won it, but it's still interesting how those two years Hogan still won it. Yeah. Right. He didn't even need to. Like, why did he... Why did he win? He was already at the top, but he still... <laughs> right. He was... Showcased he was... that he was still at the top, right? Yeah. So that, that's that's kind of weird. They could have really put somebody else in that spot and maybe really elevated yeah, somebody because, like, yeah. like Tito Santana or somebody like that right. or whatever. <laughs> well, even like they did with Hacksaw. Like, they did with Hacksaw or... You know, John Studd had been um, it kind of the end of his career at that point, but you know, him winning, sure, why not? Or so, like Macho Man, or exactly, or Macho King at that Macho time. Macho King, yeah. Uh, but but you know, we talked about ninety two. Let's skip ahead to ninety three because this year was was uh, special because it's the first time the main event at WrestleMania is on the line. You have Caesar and Cleopatra coming to uh, make the announcement and to congratulate the winner and all that because it's going to be at Caesar's Palace. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that one is another year where you have a long, you know, another person who's in there a long time. You see the Bob Backlund and Ric Flair going at it, which is really cool for a lot of old school fans because Flair was the NWA guy. Mm -hmm. Backlund was the WWF guy or WWF, like later, end of his run. You know, so that was really cool to see them like kind of going at it, and then uh, you know Backlund hung in there, and there was a lot of good, big stars in that one too. It was kind of like the Rumble before it. Yeah, I think that was a really good one. Um, and uh, you know, um, I'll never forget watching that one, and it was down to Yokozuna and Macho Man, and we were just my brother and I were praying for, we were literally praying for Macho Man to be win because we were thinking Bret Hart versus the Macho Man, and yeah. re- imagine. How freaking amazing that main event would have been at WrestleMania. Right. Not to say that Brett and Yokozuna wasn't a good one, because it was, in my opinion. But yeah, Macho Man and Brett, oh man, that would would have been an awesome match to see. Yeah, just think of what what could have happened. Um, anything yeah anything could happen, Any, as Vince would say, anything could happen <laughs> in the wwf yeah um right but but you know that's that's where it started though like um that i mean and that's where it added to the excitement again though too where where it really you know it made a new star yokozuna i mean he just started i i vaguely remember watching that's that's one of the first ones that i do remember watching like with my dad and my sister and I think my dad was pulling for Macho Man as well, but me, I think I would have been like seven, about to turn eight at the time, and me just being a kid, I'm like, there's no way Macho Man can pick up your but you were, but you were right. Out. But you were right. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. there's no way, just because he's too fat, like, not, not thinking yeah. like, oh, that's how good of a writer I am, like, no, I just, he's too fat, he's not going to be able to pick him up and throw him out or anything like yeah. that, so I knew... In my heart of hearts, that Yokozuna was gonna win, even though I didn't like him. Well, it's the same <laughs> thing though. Like that's funny that Yokozuna won because the big guy, like the Big Show, never <laughs> the, wins. The big guy, the, well, right back. The big, well, no, <laughs> but the big guys that they always say, like like Earthquake, you know, like yeah, they never won. Yeah. They never won the Rumble. Big Show, I'm sorry, is never gonna win the Royal Rumble. Kane will. It, never Kali, win. yeah, all these big guys, but they always make it like, oh, they're such. I mean, but. No one can throw him out, but yet it happens. <laughs> but yet, Kali gets thrown out by a girl. It's right like, there, you go. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, she could do it. I can. Um, the the next one um, w- was highlighted ninety four. I know we're just kind of glossing through some of these years here. I think it's worth noting too is one of the reasons I'm doing this is because um, again, it's it's real easy to go back and look at the more like recent years. Yeah. Because I don't know, there's more, it's a lot of the guys that are still around now. So like John Cena and everybody, it's right. pretty self-explanatory, but back in the day, maybe it leads, needs a little context as to what was going on and everything else. But you have, you know, with this one, there's, um, you know, again, WrestleMania thing is on the line this time. Yokozuna's champion. And now it ends up being, well, what happened? Which one are we talking the about? 94, 94. 94. That's with um, 
Shawn Michaels? No, this is Bret Hart. Bret Les Hart. Luger. Bret Hart and Les Luger. Luger. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting a little no, ahead no, of myself. Right. Yeah. Bret Hart and Les Luger. I mean, uh, it came down to them two, and who who who's gonna win? No one knew. Like, because either of them were at the position to headline WrestleMania. Well, and that's that when they went over at the same time. Uh, yeah. Like they timed that perfectly when you yeah. watch that. Like they did a really good job. Really good job. At, and I sat there and I questioned like. Would they be able to time it that well again with the cameras and stuff that we have now, where we actually really can slow down and see who could actually who would hit first and everything like that? Like, would it still like like when we were just watching the clip? Yeah, Yeah, we were just watching the clip, and I'm like, I wonder if that could happen again. But I don't think it could. But one of the more ridiculous things that happened too at this Royal Rumble is where uh, it was the the casket match with Undertaker and Yokozuna. Where Undertaker got beat up by like fifty. Oh guys. yeah, yeah. I <laughs> yeah, think that that huge. actually, that kind of well, not that actual match. The ending of it when it showed Undertaker rising up, or, and that kind of overshadowed the match, the Rumble well, yeah, itself. Yes, you know, yeah, even yeah. though I took way too long. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they learned their lesson too because a couple years later, when like you know Kane. Uh, 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 the the Undertaker has not had a good uh, run uh, with those early rumbles there because no. um, he also got set on fire by Kane. Yeah, in, yep, in yep. the casket match, and that that was at the end. But like, yeah, th- this you know that'll be something I'll, I'll write about um, more on on uh, on the website and everything else. But you know, the next year though, Shawn Michaels, tell me, tell us about that one. That's the one where uh, the the infamous one foot, right? Yeah, the infamous one foot where he uh, he got thrown over by uh, British Bulldog, who you and I were just talking about. Why is he not in the Hall of Fame? I guess that's something that we can talk about later. Yeah, we were going to talk about that. Talk later, about yeah. that later, but uh, yeah, British Bulldog thought that he won, and the infamous Shawn Michaels one foot foot rule came into play, where he had both feet have to touch, and he kind of set his legacy right there and became and started his road to become Mr. WrestleMania at that that point with that one foot came back through British Bulldog over and and won. That's what I was talking the point I was talking about before. Uh it's it's worth noting here that Shawn Michaels, yes, he entered at number one and he made it all the way to the end. But this rumble was shortened to only a minute <laughs> between each and they they yeah. they said it was like more fast and fur- furious action you know f- fuck it just sucked it was just terrible there's no way to develop like you know um it's just guys out guy after guy was like just sort of coming out right and there was no way to like build like, any sort of like rhythm or like you know anything, and the the only cool thing about that rumble was the fact that it was the bulldog and Michaels that started it and ended it. Yeah, that was yeah. the only kind of cool thing. And of course, the ending, like what happened. I mean, that was cool. But, but I mean, other than that, it just really sucked. Yeah, I just remember being so really as a kid, I remember being so disappointed in that. I've been like knowing, like even then, how much the time was a factor. In yeah, it. yeah. That's one that I do. I remember watching, uh, and I really did. I guess I didn't look too much into it as you did, because I wasn't as big of a fan as you are, as you were and are still. But I remember just watching it, like thinking the whole time, them someone's gonna come in and throw them two out. Like they're not gonna make it the whole way, and then they yeah. do. I'm like, oh shit! But that was that was <laughs> one again. Going back to what you were saying. That was one where there was really, I mean, I have to look at the roster of who exactly was on there, but mm-hmm. just going off the top of my head, there was like nobody in that, like, that rumble. Yeah. It was just all shit. <laughs> Doink. Like, Doink was, was in that rumble, okay. No, but like, the, <laughs> like the, the Dunn, uh, like, well done, the tag team. Yeah. Timothy Well and Stephen Dunn, or just like these random, just random people that, you know, um, like uh, I don't know if I don't know if that was the one that Mantar was in. Uh, I get I get ninety five and ninety six confused because again they were both short. Mm-hmm. Ninety six was the same way. Shawn Michaels also won that one. Yeah. So it's I I get those confused um, pretty easily. Yeah. You know, but um, you know again um, 
it, it just it's just the shortness of that really um you know sucked but it did you know it set up the whole deal with uh you know the the Iron Man match at WrestleMania 12 oh, and all yeah. that legendary stuff so you know um which is funny cuz you know you could do the Iron Man match for an hour, but you know his rumble has to be short, <laughs> right? Thirty minutes or whatever. So, but I mean, that was the Iron Man match is one of the, in my opinion, one of the, my favorite matches ever. Yeah. So I mean, I can say nothing bad about that, and I wish it would have went longer. Well, it did, <laughs> well, it, it, it did, did it, but it you did, know, but longer yeah, than yeah. you know, just that little bit of overtime that they had. Um, now the next year, uh, I want to, I want to tell everybody where I was at, at this point in my life in, in 1997, <laughs> I'm in seventh grade. Okay. I was a big Shawn Michaels fan, mm-hmm. big Shawn Michaels fan. And this is when he is, um, you know, he, he had his run as champion and everything else. And I like Shawn Michaels a lot when he was the bad guy, like w- not the bad guy, but when he was a bad guy, <laughs> when he was, um, you're reacting, we're reacting to uh, right now is a network <laughs> on in my office and we're watching, uh, it's the, it's the slam Yokozuna <laughs> challenge and the USS intrepid and, yeah. um, everybody's try all the football players and everybody's trying to slam. Yokozuna. This is what I love about the network because they just show this, like you know, there's some days like <laughs> this is the, you know we're recording this on a Thursday, um, so this is Throwback Thursday here, uh, you know that they have. So it's really cool that they have this stuff on the network. But anyway, back to the Rumble. Telling everybody where um, I was at. I'm in seventh grade. I'm a huge Shawn Michaels fan. Okay, if you rewind back a little bit, the previous um, major pay per view. Mm-hmm. we have is survivor series 96 mm-hmm. survivor series 96 it's Shawn michaels versus psycho sid for some reason i don't really know why because i don't mind him now i don't mind him now at all but i hated with a passion more than anything <laughs> i hated psycho sid yeah i hated him yeah. i could not stand him and i said that night Oh, if if Sid wins the title somehow, I didn't think he would. But if Sid wins the title, then I'm boycotting WWF. I'm not going to watch it for the first time that I can remember in my entire life. Yeah. So, well, Sid wins the title, <laughs> and I, true to my word, I did not watch. So I missed the next pay per view. Um, I missed the Royal Rumble that year. I missed everything up until WrestleMania. I watched WrestleMania, and I didn't even get back into it until that summer. So I didn't even get back into it. It took me like six months or a little more than that to get into it. Yeah. And um, it was all because Sid was the champion. <laughs> and, uh, you know, going but, but going back and watching um, this, this Royal Rumble, you know, they had the big match where, you know, Sean, you know, regained the belt and everything like that, mm-hmm. um, which was cool. But there was something kind of weird about this Royal Rumble. It was a big presence of uh, Mexican wrestlers. Yes, yes. I remember actually watching this one and texting you. Yes. About how, and I'm sorry to say, how much this Rumble sucked. Yeah. And how it was so hard to get through because, not because of the Mexican wrestlers, but just because I didn't know anyone that was there because there was a lot of the Mexican wrestlers. Like they had three or four come out like back to back to back at one point. And I texted, I texted you about my favorite, the Latin lover. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah. But you also have people like uh, Savio Vega and some great (laughs) names like that. Crush and crush, not yeah. and not like the Kona Crush or the um the uh the crush that was with Mr. Fuji, the crush that went to jail. Um yeah. and that was with the Nation of Domination. Yeah. Uh so that was the jailbird crush, I <laughs> the, guess you call it. The real crush. The real yeah, the real <laughs> the real crush. Uh so you know that that I that's the thing that that's a biggest that's a huge pet peeve too with Rumbles is when they waste entries, like yeah. obviously, again, that's the thing. Is like, is the Latin Lover gonna f- really freaking win the Royal Rumble <sighs> and face Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 13? I was pulling for Sadio Vega. It, like, it's 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 <laughs> Flash Funk, maybe. Um, <laughs> but but I'm, but I'm saying I'm not even saying like people on the main roster. I'm saying when they bring in these outside people, right? Like there was like, like one year where they brought like Carlos Colon in, and they brought like uh, they just brought like random. 
people. Right. Um, and then it happened. I'm not even talking about, I'm not even talking about like the legends, like when the, you know, some great moments. Like I love when they brought Kevin Nash back a mm-hmm. couple of times. I mm-hmm. love gold dust did it a few times too. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me, like, that's awesome. That's Jake cool. The snake, they brought him back. A, uh, like, you, like they did the, the whole, um, you know, that whole thing. I, I love that. But I'm saying when there's people that are completely random, right. That these Mexican wrestlers or whatever, you know, they're not going to win. Right. Or when they do the commentators, JBL last year, yeah, like JBL last year, like you know, it's just, it's just like uh, I get it, but you know, it's like it's you know, he's not gonna come in and win and go wrestle whoever was champion. If last they year. did something like that, they did something crazy like that once, yeah, then it would like it would just be really interesting. Like that year when Santino almost beat, um, how crazy would that have been if Santino, yeah, would have like actually beat, um. Through Alberto Del Rio. Alberto Del Rio, yeah. You know, um, but that but that's the thing though. So that ninety seven Rumble definitely suffered, but there are some really good high points in this one, and it's worth it's worth watching for Stone Cold alone. For, Yo, for yeah, us. yeah, yeah, for sure. And I mean, that's like when I was a big fan of Stone Cold, and when I say it wasn't good, it wasn't because of Stone Cold's performance, but it was just good. It wasn't good because of what you said, like a lot of Mexican wrestlers, and they were wasting yeah. picks. You know, yeah. So, um, you know, it's from there and then, you know, Austin, the next year with Austin, that's worth watching because Austin was the marked man, Mm -hmm. that whole thing. Fantastic. And then the next year, um, you know, uh, I want to tell everybody, I love telling this story because, um, back in, now at this point I'm in high school in 1999 and, um, like it's the attitude era. So everybody's watching it again. I had grown up all through school, kind of a closet. Fan. I mean, I like wrestling. In fact, well, I wasn't really in the closet as a wrestling fan. Cause I actually gave out wrestling Valentine's. I had W <laughs> Valentine's you? that I gave out <laughs> to all the girls in my class. I'm not even joking. That's a hundred percent fact. They made them. It's like, it was like, uh, like I had the macho King on it and then it would, and Sherry, and it would say like, you're my, you know, queen of hearts or something like that. Oh gosh. But you know, it like, I, these are, were officially, I didn't make these. These were officially a licensed official WWF, uh, you know, product. Um, but anyway, uh, I had been the only one who was really a wrestling fan kind of in school growing up. Yeah. Attitude era comes all of a sudden, everybody's all over it. You know, everybody's talking We're all, I'm having conversations with everybody. Mm-hmm. There's girls that are into it. There's girls. Yeah. I can talk to girls about wrestling. Yeah. What? <laughs> you know, I have people over, I have parties and everything else. So this is at the height of, of all that 99 here. And I'm also known for, for that. But then also with all my friends who are all in the stone, Cold, and like in reality, I love stone Cold just as much as anybody, if not more so, mm-hmm. but like to my friends and everybody else, like I was Mr. McMahon, like mm-hmm. I kissed his ass, like I would have been in the corporation. I would have started my own chapter of the corporation <laughs> at the school if I could have. You know, everything. Right. Like I just loved McMahon. I loved everything, like you know, about him. I loved Briscoe and Patterson kissing his ass. Anyway, uh, to make a long story even longer here, real quick, real yeah. quick, <laughs> we've met a lot of wrestlers, and I just want. To ask you this question, if you ever met Mr. McMahon, would that be the first time that you would be speechless and not know what to say? Um, yeah, because I would be kind of, just because he is, all the stories we hear, Yeah, like I wouldn't want to... Um, would you be starstruck? I don't know if I'd be, yeah, I would be, I, I wouldn't be, it's hard to say starstruck, but like, because we've met a lot of the guys and like we've met, I mean... It's hard to say starstruck, I definitely would be nervous not wanting to say anything stupid right around him right. i think that i mean it's a good question because i like you hear about how crazy he is sometimes yeah about with with different things and like you know i don't know I w- and i wouldn't want to like you know ask him about anything wwe related maybe but just wanna... being such a big fan of him alone you're probably like oh i want to ask you this but yeah <laughs> but, but, you, but you hear about how, you, how intimidating he is too right right but then you talk you know when i talk to guys like vince russo and talk to you know Cornette in these interviews and they they tell me about how you know they got to know vince and because they got to hang out with him and they got to spend time at his house and yeah you know um they said that there's a real guy in there somewhere you know yeah 
that's really cool. But again, I, I don't think I would have the opportunity to get that. So I would, I would be really nervous. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't be like, Hey, I, uh, I, I picked you to win the rumble. I, mean, you know, I can say that, but, 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 you know, back to the story. So like I said, I was, you know, the guy for the corporation and all that. And, um, you know, this particular year, cause again, everybody's into it. Everybody's picking, doing their picks for the Royal rumble. Yeah. And everybody's, you know, Oh, Stone Cold's going to win again. He's going to win it, you know, uh, cause it would have been his three Pete, I guess mm-hmm. at that time. And, um, everybody, everybody said, you know, he's going to win. And then I, my pick, when it came time for me to pick, I said, Mr. McMahon's going to win it because McMahon was entered the Rumble and he was entering in at number two with Austin being number one. Yeah. And, uh, like that was, that was the, the deal. So McMahon was in it. I had to. I knew in my heart of hearts that there was no way that Vince McMahon was going to win the Rumble, but I had to pick him. Because he was my guy, I had to, and I had to stay loyal yeah. to Mister McMahon, yeah. right? So holy shit, when this happens, when when it goes down the way it did, uh, and and Vince came out victorious, I mean, just the vindication, just the the feeling of that, like you know, telling everybody I told you so. And that they were all wrong, and yeah. they thought I was stupid for picking. They're like, "Don't be stupid! Like you know he's not gonna like." They literally said that, like he's not gonna win. Like just stop! Like you're always like are up like McMahon's ass basically, and everything else. Like no, I was right, and I picked him. <laughs> you know, which nobody like nobody could have predicted that. Yeah. Um. So that that's one of the things why that's that's a really great um. That's a really great moment, you know. Uh, that that's one of these things, and and that's you know that's what's cool again about this stuff is that like, you know, um, even getting experience that you know everybody has those kind of stories with these different things. Yeah. And if you don't, you make up you know new ones now with them, and you get to see them in a different context and and everything else. So that's what's what's really cool about it, um, you know. So. Over the next couple of years, I think, you know, there's there's a lot of different highlights. I wanted to kind of turn it over to you now because this is really the time sort of at this point after you stopped watching as a fan back then and you sort of went back and sort of rediscovered all these different things. So yeah. I want to turn that over to you, but we're going to do that. We're going to take a quick little break, and uh, when we come back, we're going to hear more from Quaylen about what he rediscovered um after the attitude era for the royal rumbles i want to tell everybody about our sponsor it's wrestlingdvdnews.com and you can visit wrestlingdvdnews.com for exclusive insider news and reviews on all the latest wwe dvds and blu-rays first what's the next wwe dvd release on the horizon which should you buy and which should you avoid how is the WWE Network changing the company strategy on DVDs? Plus, get involved with their multiple giveaways each and every month for your chance to win WWE DVDs absolutely free. It's all happening now at WrestlingDVDNews.com. And we're back! Okay, we're talking about the Royal Rumble here with Quaylen, and, uh, you know, so we, we kind of, you know, sort of gloss over everything just different memories different years and stuff like that that i had sort of watching these things for the first time um you know a, as a fan like what what happened but you sort of checked out a little bit after the attitude era yeah I did. And, and you've but now that you have the network you've gone back and watched some rumbles and talk to me about some of the highlights and just some of your favorite rumble matches and moments <clears throat> that you um, discovered oh uh, well i guess not saying it's one of my favorite, but the first one that I remember just because we just watched a little bit of a clip of it was um when uh, Hornswoggle and John Cena kind of teamed up. I like that because it kind of showed like they were having fun. Yes, you that know? was cool. And, yeah, and that was cool. I, I think that that's cool because that's as much as people hate on John Cena, and I will be one of the first to say I lead the way. And not being a bit the biggest fan of John Cena, he goes out, he has fun, he does an amazing job when it comes to reaching out and um, really showing that he he loves what he does. You know, a lot of people they always say, you know, if you're not if you're in a job and you're uh, you hate it, then it's your job. But if you 
if you go to work and you do it and you love it, it's not a job anymore. And I can really see that that's what John Cena does. He loves what he does, and I commend him for that. But that moment right there when it was him and Hornswoggle, he's just like sitting there like Hornswoggle sitting there A and people. He's just like looking at him like, yeah, little man, you're not yeah. going to win, but you're having fun. You like, know, they, yeah, 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 they do a little, the little three high five. Yeah. And, you know, I think that was an awesome moment. But then I go back to one of the first ones I watched, and it was when John Cena was a rapper. <laughs> and, oh my god when he came and he out came and he rapped to the ring and i'm sitting there watching it, i'm like this is the reason why i stopped watching it just because it was so bad isn't it interesting oh, that it's the same guy yeah but, but that's the thing but but the thing is is that like him rapping and doing that is what got him to to a certain point right um but that was just particularly bad. Like he did it all the way to the ring, to the whole, t- like uh, all the way down the whole time. And I'm like, just shut up and get into the ring and get thrown out already, please. With, <laughs> with maybe the exception of maybe the road dog. Yeah. Anybody doing anything on the mic all the way to the ring, right? Just has just doesn't work. And that's just because road dog, he was phenomenal when he did it. Yo, yo, you didn't know, and he just came out, and it's just like, yeah. But like, if it's whether it's our truth or, oh, I mean, whoever whoever you have doing anything on the mic, like all all the way to the ring. At doesn't. least, at least our truth gets everyone involved. When he, what's yeah. up? And he throws, and everyone does it. But John Cena was just him rapping the whole way down. And I'm like. Cut his mic, please. But in his defense, though, <laughs> that was when he first started it. Yeah, yeah. So, like, he really hit his stride, though, when he would do it more. Um, and I don't know if he had a... I, I don't remember that exactly. And maybe somebody could correct this so we go back and watch it. But, like, he did much better when he had a focus and he could really aim his raps at somebody. I mean, he was just doing it about the whole rumble and kind yeah. of everybody in it or whatever it was. Yeah. But like when he could really hone in on somebody like the big show or right. whatever it would have been at the time, like he could really, you know, you would know better than me because you know, that's just like I said, that's when I stopped watching it and I didn't watch every single one, you know, but and, I'm totally with you though on the, like that uh, one. Cause I went back and watched that too. That was so bad. Um, um, and then, uh, other other moments that that I went back and watched that I missed um Undertaker and uh Shawn Michaels. I thought that was an awesome moment. Even when it was just the four who was it? it was Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Orton and was it Shame? No, who was it? No, this is two thousand seven you're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure the final four were in there ex- exactly, but you know, basically what but, you're talking yeah, about is when... when it got to the, the, the last four and you saw, like, them and then it was just them two. I think that their match... It was a whole match it at was, the end of the It was a game. great match at the end of the Rumble, which I don't know why they don't do more of, probably because yeah. of time restraint and everything like that, but just sitting there and just getting, like, that extra little bonus, that e- like, that Easter egg bonus of of another, of a phenomenal but match. Especially being those two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, two of my favorite wrestlers. Well, and, 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 and up to that point, too, which was, which you know, we talked about, they had sort of been, as, as they, well... I don't want to say that it's almost getting back to this, but at a certain point they were using the rumble to, you know, um, it seemed like to develop new stars when yeah. you have people like, uh, you know, Brock Lesnar winning yeah, Benoit, mm-hmm. you know, um, Batista at that time, this first time, yeah. you know, Mysterio and that line. And then all of a sudden, like it's down to Michaels and the undertaker who kind of already had their time. Right. It was cool to see those two guys go at it, which is a great, I mean, Everybody, the general consensus is like, okay, their matches at WrestleMania, respectively 25 and 26, Mm -hmm. are probably the greatest matches of all time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you want to see a great precursor to that, go watch the Royal Rumble 07. Right. And, I mean, that's you're you're spot on with saying that that's one of the best moments, because it really is. And then one of my, going back and watching it, one of my favorite, I would say, performers in uh, Rumble matches was... Benoit. It was. It was I great. Was, it was great. Yeah. I all the ones that I watched, I think there was like three or four of them where he was in there, and like I was a big WCW guy along with WWE. I was that guy who I said before would go, turn back and forth and watch back and forth, and I loved Chris Benoit. I loved him, and then he would get into the Rumble match, and I would just love how his intensity in there, and it was like he was that one person where. He may, he may win. 
no matter where he was at, yeah. no matter what you didn't think about, oh, he's not going to win because he can't main event WrestleMania. <laughs> no, you got it, and you thought that he might win. Well, that year, too, he this is, again, worth noting, he enters at number one. Yeah. And he goes the full sixty plus minutes. Yeah, yeah. At that time, this is now this is before Mysterio set the record a couple years later. But like, you know, again, you know, Benoit having done this, and it's such a weird, it's such a weird thing considering what happened. Yeah, you know. But it is great that you could see, like, um, you know, I, I mean, it, it kudos to WWE for at least having having it on there. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, it is a part of the history of it. And it was a good performance. I know that they don't want to glorify him any, in any particular way. It's such a weird thing. Um, you know, but it is, but is, you know, I guess the fact that what happened, uh, ended up having with Benoit, you know, my opinion at least is, is that, uh, you know, the, the guy for whatever you want to say, I mean, he, he did have, good matches. Oh yeah. You know, yeah, and yeah. so there's some historical significance there. And, right. Um, you know, but, but that was, uh, you know, the, I guess that, that leads us to, I know we, we share another favorite moment from around this era, uh, from the next year, which again, Mr. McMahon making so many great moments at the Royal Rumble. Oh gosh. Um, <laughs> you know, you um, know, and at this, this moment is another moment where I wish I had, not saying I wish it would happen again today, but I wish that we had the technology advancement that we have today back then. But when he, what the moment we're talking about is when it was um, uh, Batista and Cena, you know, they both go over and McMahon comes back and he's very, very upset that this has happened again. And he storms down to the ring and he starts to, do a little jog before he before he goes into the ring and you're sitting there and you're looking it's like why is he sitting down <laughs> I, I never forget watching that it's exactly what i thought like what I, I mean i thought well something obviously because he tried to stand up yeah yeah but like um it, it's it's funny if you watch if you watch it it's it's like okay well he's he like he's he's pissed Throws his jacket down and then starts sprinting to the ring with like ten feet before the ring. Yeah, and then he blows his quads out, both of them. And and I didn't even really know until watch. Everybody needs to go watch the countdown, the yes. Royal Rumble countdown yeah. show, because they go in depth into this as to one of the the like craziest moments in the Royal Rumble. And Vince actually comments on it himself. Yeah, and that was- what, what's really interesting about this is that at least according to the countdown. From what I could gather, Cena and Batista going over at the same time, for what it sounds like, was not planned. Right. So, like, that's why Vince came out as as they say, and I I hate using wrestling terms like this because I'm 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 not in the business. And mm-hmm. I don't want to pretend that I am. Mm-hmm. But like, you, I guess as a shoot, he yeah. came out and um, all in a huff and pissed off that this happened. And then, holy shit, like, he blows his quads out, and then he can't stand up in the ring. And then only, I guess, you, you know, this is what we're talking about, Vince being, like, who he is and everything. Um, uh, God damn it. I'm sorry. Sorry. I mean, the, uh, we're, we're talking here, and again, we're being distracted because <laughs> Ben on a mission has just come on. Um and, and on the t- on the on the screen here on the network, and uh, this is what's so great about um, you never know what you're going to get here. Mabel and oh Mo and Oscar, of course, uh, doing the men in a mission rap. Um, this is just this is what's great about the network. Anyway, I'm sorry because we have it on in the background here, yeah. just while we're talking, and I usually have it on here in my office. But the, what I was going to say was is that like it seems like only Vince could be the type of guy who would be um, able to. The amount of pain that yeah. he must have been in, yeah, and then just to still be like going through in character, in and, character, yeah. and everything else, you know. Well, the thing that I was saying about technology, I wish that there were like camera phones or something around because I, if you notice, they don't show McMahon getting out of the ring, they don't or show even going ring, yeah. back down the aisle. To I want to see like it was he hobbling. They yes. have to like get like a wheelchair to take him back. Like, how did he get from out of the ring back into the dressing room? That's the only thing I really wanted to see. But yeah, you don't, you can't see that because it just goes right back onto the match. And then Batista throws Cena over in his little 
<laughs> fingers, nub fingers when he's like <laughs> celebrating. And yeah. You're um, not a fan of Batista, are you? I, I'm not. And I mean, I will say that a lot of those wrestlers then when I wasn't watching I, I i didn't become a fan of because i wasn't watching no. I, I never got invested in i like orton i do like randy orton a lot whenever he comes back yeah um but yeah like batista i really wasn't a fan of i'm not really a fan of cena even though i like what they do and even watching batista's uh documentary and, they, and he says like a lot of people think i'm this guy like i understand all that but I just, I never like Batista. I don't even like uh, Brock Lesnar. I hate Lesnar. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm loyal to, to the guys beforehand. And I like a lot of the newer guys now that I'm watching, like, NXT and, you know, getting invested in them. You watch NXT. I don't even really watch NXT. Yeah, you, I, you I love watching watch, NXT. Yeah. I love watching the them develop and then seeing what they can do in the on the main stage except for the Ascension. Ascension. I've never been a fan of the Ascension, even when they were in the NXT. How great was that Ascension getting killed oh, at the man. Raw? I would have loved to see. The only missing piece I think of that was them hitting that DX music and having yes. having uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels coming down in DX uniform, in a shirt and just... Ah, that would have been awesome. It also would have been awesome. I for some reason I thought JBL was going to. I don't know why I didn't think of Bron <laughs> Simmons, but like I, for some reason I was expecting Animal to come out. Yeah, yeah, with the pads and everything else, like yeah. the spikes and and all that. Uh, but anyway, so so back to the Rumble. You know, there's that stuff with with Vince and everything else, and like you know we we you know we talked about that, but like you know one of the biggest things in in um you know. Rumble folklore, I think it's gonna have to go down as a disappointment from last year. Mm -hmm. I remember you and I were maybe planning on possibly going to Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah, and making the trip out there because it was gonna be a great Rumble. We thought, right, it's gonna be a great event, and this has to be a great Royal Rumble. But I, I think it was, and maybe I'm being too hard on it, but I did just watch it again. They you know, made a big deal about it being on after Raw, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I checked it out. And it really was not a good match, a rumble match, anyway. Right. But despite the fact of you know Daniel Bryan not being in it, um, everybody being pissed about that, and despite the fact that you know Batista won, yeah, um, it really wasn't that great of a match. I didn't think. No, I I remember sitting there watching it with you, and we both just like look at each other like, really? Like, come on. I mean, well, Kofi had his moment, which. I love. Yes. I love doing, when Kofi I, has his minute, I hope he gets uh, to do another moment, one, yeah. And I really want to see what he does this year. I love the fact that Rome, it was kind of like Roman Reigns coming out party. But in those two moments, oh, and then uh, Nash coming back. But other yeah. than like, those three moments, I'm just like, it, it, was, it, it, was, it was bad. Yeah. I'm glad that, I'm kind of glad we so did. Glad we didn't I'm go. glad that that wasn't my first live event. Yeah. Because, like, you know, I've never been to a live event, and I want, I, I want it to be, like, an event that I'm going to you know, always remember, you know? And I don't want that. Well, you would have remembered it. You yeah. You would have remembered it, yeah. Well, I, you know, the, 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 there's a couple of historical things here in the sense that uh, you know, it was CM Punk's last match. Yeah. Which we didn't know at the time. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, the, the, other, the other thing there, too, is that... Um, the, just the backlash that came out of that was so interesting because everybody wanted Daniel Bryan, and for mm -hmm. some reason, for some reason, they decided to keep him off of that. I don't know what explanation they could have. He wasn't injured or anything. Like, what explanation could they have possibly have for just like keeping him off there? But then they ended up, you know, his history, you know, unfolded, and and he ended up be being in that spot anyway. Right. Because everybody was so pissed about it. Right. Even our good friend Mick Foley we made a big stink about it and, and that was and you know famously Yeah, and beat up his T V. So, you know, that but that's the thing about the Royal Rumble is that everybody has their picks. Everybody has people who they think should win. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, leads us to this year. And um I think that this year it's not as clear cut of a winner as it sometimes is, at least to me. See, and I I feel the I feel the opposite. Not that it's going to be a clear cut one winner, 
but in my opinion, it's going to be one of two guys. Yeah. Well, I guess it it has to be one of these two guys. It has to either be Daniel but, Bryan or Roman Reigns. But there's still like I think I guess what I'm what I'm saying is is that like I think because of last year, they may they're going to do one of two things. They're going to either give us what we wanted to see last year mm-hmm. with Daniel Bryan winning, or they're going to completely like swerve it and do something totally different, and then again make up for yeah you know like have like have somebody win it and then they lose their spot and then it, you know they that happens too um so are you going on the record and saying someone from the new day is going to win yeah it's going <laughs> to oh man um i i think i'm mean, going to go on record i think i got to go with my heart for this one like i did with McMahon. it's going to be adam rose yo oh, no um you know the, the it, Picking people like that, the one person that I would not be mad to see win would be Damian Sandow. Well, well, okay, we talked about this last night, okay? Yes. This is how you make Damian Sandow win, in my opinion, okay? Uh, The Miz and him are are like, they end up eliminating somebody. Let's just say it's, let's say they eliminate uh, Daniel Bryan. Daniel Bryan. So the Miz and Sandow, and they eliminate Daniel Bryan. The Miz is like celebrating, mm-hmm. and he's doing so. Miz or Sandow's doing, or Miz Dow is is you know mimicking him and doing the whole thing. And then like uh, you know because he won, he thinks he won. The Miz's music is playing and everything else. And then like he like jumps over the top rope to leave the yeah. ring and eliminates himself. And then Miz Dow is still standing still in the standing ring. Standing in the ring, and he and he wins. And he wins. That would be amazing. Um, I want to. I want to. You know, just again while we're talking about this year, I, I want to um, because again, this is something that we talked about, and I think it's um, today. There's a new writing position that opened up for WWE. Yeah. Um. So, you know, unfortunately, maybe you might not be completely qualified for it, but based on this idea alone, you might be. I just thought I want. I want to plan. I want you to just tell. The listeners out there uh, in, in in podcast land, just like what your idea, how maybe you would have handled the Royal Rumble this year, okay. um, you know, okay. especially given especially given what happened last year and what you would have done um, to kind of like make okay. it that much more special and memorable with who's yeah. in it this year. Now, first, let me say with me not being like an ultimate fan, I do know how wrestling works and how storylines get built and things of that nature and I do see how they do things but I honestly feel like <clears throat> they dropped the ball with both Roman Reigns Reigns blah 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 blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Roman Reigns and Daniel Bryan both being out on injury and then bring them back and not bring them back to something that was meaningful. So my thought was instead of just on SmackDown yeah, and Raw, like yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Like they brought them back to beef with Big Show and Kane and it's just I don't I don't like those storylines because you know they're not really gonna lead to anywhere. They're not good matches in my opinion. And they just nothing drag special on. about yeah, it. Yeah, there's nothing why is why I, is the thing I ask why. So what I would have done if I was head of writing is I would have kept them both out until the Royal Rumble. I would have kept them out of the spotlight. I would have In kept secret, them. You wouldn't have even announced that they were that they were healthy or they were even recovering, kind of like what they did with John Cena. And and just just to jump in here, John Cena at the time and all the wrestling websites and everything else it was known or put out there that he was going to be out for another few months yeah and was even questionable for wrestlemania yeah so when i was in madison square garden that night with everybody else there when he came out it was one of those oh shit moments yeah. like how is this like happening right so they kind of swerved everybody there yeah and that's what you're saying you would have done but here, say, i wouldn't that- have i wouldn't even put out anything they just would have been they would have been forgot about not really forgot about, but nothing. So then yeah. they first, so you know, there's up next, 
Welcome to the Royal Rumble. Now it's time for the 30-man Royal Rumble match. And blah, 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 blah. Let's see who drew number one. And you give it a good 30 seconds. And then Roman Reigns music hit. Da-da, da-da, and then... He comes out of the crowd. He comes out of the crowd. You know that the crowd is going to explode because it's the first time seeing him. And he's coming back and everything. It's like... Right then, you're already making up for half of the Rumble match last year because the excitement's yeah. going to be in the air. People are going to be ready to see Roman get back into it, into the ring for the first time since he was out. Everything is like, that's good. That's the perfect way to start it off. And now let's see who gets number two. Then you have Daniel Bryan's music hit, who will probably be the only person at this time to get a bigger, as the wrestle people say, a bigger pop. Then Roman and sure, then they come down and it's just like both of them, like no one knew that they were coming from injury and they're both there on on in the stage and just like looking around. And for ninety seconds, everyone's just cheering them both, you know, because they're both bad. The yes, chat would be going yes on the chant, whole time. Yeah, everything. And it's just like they're both just sitting there, and you don't have them wrestle each other yet because that's. That's the ovation that you would get from both of them being So there. the ovation takes up the whole time until oh, the next yeah. entrant comes out. Oh, right? yeah. And then the next entry could be like one of those throwaway guys. Like, I'm sorry if you're listening and you get mad at me. Like, Heath Slater, who <laughs> yes, comes he down. <laughs> and, you know, Daniel Bryan, the first you, you see him and Bryan go out a little bit. You see Bryan throw him over. So, you know, it's still just them two. And then the next person comes down, I... I think I said who did I say yesterday? Uh, it could be Adam Rowe. It could be somebody like that. Someone, like yes, somebody another like another person like that who would obviously be scared of uh, Roman, and they just look at him and they eliminate themselves. And then you put Dale Bryan and uh, Rags together and let them go together, go at it. But I think that would have made for a much exciting. A uh, big exciting moment for WWE, like you, you rekindle that that excitement that you missed last year. Just having both of them two being like the number one, you just have them battle, even going on to be in the last two, where one of them wins. You know, well, talk about even um, building excitement around the network and saying on Raw, you have to subscribe to the network to see what happened. Yeah, yeah, to see this moment yeah. play out. You know, yeah, that's that's what they're they're missing, and I, you know, I'm with you on this because they kind of wasted their returns. You know, with Daniel Bryan wrestling for the first time in nine months or whatever it is, eight nine months right. on SmackDown, right? And then, excuse me, and then doing it two weeks in a row, right? Before the Royal Rumble, like, well, you know, um, if you they, wait that long, you sh- you just wait until the Royal Rumble because you know you're gonna have people who are gonna tune in and watch it. Yeah. You know that you need something. You need something to make sure that this year is better than last year's. Mm-hmm. And I feel like just having them two being surprise entries would have made it better, even if everything else sucked. Yeah. But just that moment, that's going to be the moment that people would have remembered. Yeah. And they wouldn't have remembered if Hornswoggle won. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. something or like Disco that. Inferno came back. And, uh, <laughs> right. Um, but but that, that could have been, and imagine what that would have been like if, if they would have those two would have gone all the way and lasted till the end. Yeah. I lasted everybody. Yeah. Imagine what the ovation would have been again. Oh man. Like when it was down to those two. And they're just like on the mat, like both winded and they just look at each other and they, they, they give like a nod, like, all right, we're, we're not rivals, but it's time to, for one of us to go on, you know, the respect that they would have between each other. And yeah, yeah, that had been awesome. Then that's the thing, you know. That's our edition of fantasy booking here for the, for the <laughs> week. But you know, and it's it's not. I mean, that's the that's the fun part of being a fan. That's the fun part. It's like you know everybody. But I, I, I want to make it clear is that like you know I know that the writing team and everybody works really hard and for what everybody oh, really yeah. says it's like you know that they don't like the product today. It's, it's you know I still watch it. You yeah, know what I mean? yeah, I'm not going to yeah. complain about it. It's like you know it's it's still. Um, uh, you know, it's it's still entertaining. It's still fun. Maybe it's not what it used to be, but we live in a different world now. Right, right. You know, you I mean, it's it's got me back into watching it. Yeah, I will say that. I will honestly say, like, I watch pretty much everything from Raw to SmackDown. You know, I, I mean, maybe it's because I'm in my 30s now. I can't really sit through a whole episode of Raw without falling asleep. 
at some point. <laughs> Maybe that's just me getting older enough because it's bad. I don't know, but the point is, is that like you know, with whatever happens, I mean, hopefully they do learn from last year a little bit. I mean, you know, and they, um, I don't know. It's just again, it's weird to think about that they like. Why would they have kept him off of there? Right? Did they like? Did they plan it all along that way? They may want want us to think that, right? But like, I mean, it's just so weird that they would have, you know, not had, um, you know, their top person be in there who they ended up just two months later ended up putting in the main event at WrestleMania and winning. Right. Not only winning the main event, but beating Triple H. Yeah, yeah. What do you think about that? He beat Triple H, and then you know, then beat Orton and Batista. Yeah. So he beat the entire evolution in one right, night. Right, right, <laughs> So, well, except for Flair. Except for Flair. Except for Flair. <laughs> but the new evolution that ended up feuding with the Shield or whatever. Right. So, um, you know, but that's the thing. Let's, let's real quick before we go, I mean, let's, I guess we might as well do this since we've talked about it and built it up. Who are you picking for this year? I, just because I'm a fan, I got to go with double R. Roman Reigns, I'm I'm a huge fan of him. I'm a fan of him, even though I, I can't pick. I, I'm I'm not gonna pick a clear cut winner. Let me back up. I would say it'll be Daniel Bryan or Roman Reigns. One you gotta pick two. one. You gotta one, pick one. I have to pick yeah. one. <sighs> Roman Reigns. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna go. I learned a lesson because um, it was a 2013. I had to pick, and it was like, well, the safe bet was John Cena, and I went with him, and that's who won. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do the same thing and say Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Uh, because um, maybe to make up for, for last year, who I don't know. I just think that the possibilities of the you know him versus Brock Lesnar for the title at WrestleMania is yeah. like, it, it's, it's too good to pass up. You can literally... Uh, you know, I was, I was talking about this with, uh, somebody who's coming up as a guest, a very special surprise guest that we're going to have yeah. on the show. I was talking about this with them, that this matchup would be like a David and Goliath thing. Yeah. As long as they didn't put stuff in the way, like for control of the WWE or the authority, like it was really about like, a, you know, man versus man and like this underdog versus the beast, you know what I mean? Right. And if that's what it was about and the authority didn't get involved and hopefully the authority just ends up, that ends up playing out with sting and all yeah. that. But like, if you had Daniel Bryan versus Brock Lesnar, what that would, that that could really be huge. See, uh, okay. You gave your explanation why you went with Daniel Bryan. And yeah. this is my explanation why I'm going with Roman Reigns, because I feel like it's going to go deeper than just, actual rumble match okay i think john cena is gonna beat brock lesnar at royal rumble okay i also think seth rollins is gonna cash in his money in the bank and beat john cena which will make him the champion which will then put him and roman reigns in a feud that will lead to wrestlemania for the title could be which i uh, if if that happens the furthermore, I will say Roman Reigns will be champion at WrestleMania. Okay. That's my thinking. That's why. I think that Cena's going to beat Lesnar. Rollins is going to cash in the very the, the same night. Rollins is going to cash in his money in the bank to beat Cena. And then WrestleMania is going to be Cena, Roman Reigns. That would be really interesting. I don't know if it's been done yet. And maybe somebody out there could tell us, but I don't know if it's been done yet, where a Money in the Bank winner has a title match already, and they lose the match and then restart it right away. Yeah. That'd be really interesting. I think that's what's, what's going to happen. Anyone listening in uh, WD, WWE uh, home office and you... Uh, and you I'm sending this right great, to them, yes. If <laughs> you think that's a great uh, storyline, hey, if you want to hire me as a as a writer, I got some ideas. Well, just put this as part and just attach it to your resume. I'm not um, even going to get into in. my to what I thought you should have done with Sting. Yeah. Which, that was another one. I'm not going to get into that one. 
well, we'll we'll have time to talk about that and a, and a lot more. But uh, really, we've we've I think we've overstayed our welcome on this Friday. But uh, you know, again, check out the website for our playlist for the network nine 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 nation dot com. Enjoy all the past Rumble stuff you can find on the network this weekend and enjoy and the w- rumble. Absolutely. Enjoy the rumble, uh, this coming Sunday, um, from Philadelphia. So we will, um, we'll check in back with, with you guys, uh, after then, and hopefully it'll be a good show, but, uh, thanks so much for joining me, Quaylen and everybody out there, th- everybody out there. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Thank you for listening. For more, visit the Network Nation at 999nation.com.